moment we'll make a start. Um, thanks for for coming to this session. I know it's the last one of the day and everybody's a bit frazzled, it's raining, we're all trying to work out how to get home. Uh, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking about uh, mass deduplication uh, using CVCRM. So uh, I've deliberately used the word mass there because we're talking about large data sets. So we had a few people sort of say 6,000, 7,000 contacts. Um, the sort of data we were dealing with is 600,000 contacts and the du duplication issues with that sort of size of database. Uh, that doesn't mean it doesn't apply to you guys. You've got the same problems, it's just at a different scale. So uh, we've got Chris um, sitting there. Um, he's gonna he's gonna be he's gonna be playing the user. So I'm playing the implementer. To implementers, we don't care about duplicates. They're not our problem. We take them. We take database from one place. We move it to another. The users start using it, and they have issues with duplicates. Right. So um, so it's good cop, bad cop, if you like. Okay. So um, do duplicates matter? That's the first question, right? Because a lot of people. A lot of orgs that I work with actually don't even know and don't, don't particularly care that they've got duplicates. Um, so I guess these questions are out for you guys. So the first one would be what, what constitutes a duplicate? So in your eyes, what is a duplicate contact? So that's the first sort of question. So anybody have any kind of answers to that question? What would you class as a duplicate? The same person, right? Okay, so that's that definition of person. Right, to your database. I'm a person and you're a person. Yeah, but in your database, how do you define what what two two of the same person actually is? Do you have enough data to, to know that? Oh, yeah. There's a variety of ways. Right. So it's not simple. Right? <laughs> it's not a simple thing. So um, you know, in our eyes, yeah, I mean, mean. Chris, I'm not the same person, but if I somehow duplicated myself, then I'd know straight away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the world, the, the, the com computers don't work that way. So those two duplicates, or what we think are duplicates, are going to potentially have different data against them. So one might have come about as a result of an event registration, so they're going to have an event registration against them, where I might have given my organization details as my address. Uh, and the other one might have been as a result of a contribution where I've given my personal details. So although the name is the same, the rest of the details may be entirely different. And it's not immediately obvious that they're duplicates. So it's an important question, and you do have to ask yourself, what do you think a duplicate is, before you start trying to tackle the problem? Because until you do that, you, you can't really tackle it. Um, so the next question is, what, 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 what does it matter? Why does it matter if you've got duplicates? What, what sort of problems have you guys faced if you've got duplicates in your database? You lose consistency of information. Things that occur under one duplicate entry are reflected in the other one, and then you might end up calling it that person or other right. things. Or yeah. a member twice, you know? Right. Yeah. Or your membership's expired, but the other one says that it's there. Still current. Yeah. 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 Stop sending me duplicate mail. Right. That's, right. That's, that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Six copies of your yeah. newsletter. Yeah. 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 You ask your largest donor for $15. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> so these, are, these, uh, these issues that you're all talking about are kind of the knock-on effects of automating your processes, right? If you knew every single person, you wouldn't have this problem. But the more data you take on board and the more you automate, um, the less control you have of the impact of duplicates. Um, so would you agree that duplicates are potentially damaging to your reputation? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so right now, so I need to get um, an export of data to a mailing house by the end of this week. It's 10,000 records um, for a newsletter uh, type thing. And I'm literally working my way through Excel, stripping out the uh, duplicate yeah. contacts, um, querying on the addresses, trying to bunch up where a family is, um, to, and then um, taking four lines and then putting it into one line and addressing the family, that kind of thing. It's laborious, to say yeah. the least. Um, but it, I have to do that because we, I, 
we have to show that we are, you know, Leukemia and Lymphoma Research is a professional organisation and we're not going to um, mail people, you know, the same address four times. Right, so that particular example is for extracts, right? right. Yeah. yeah. So that didn't come up in anybody's examples, but yeah. But so any of the implementers, what's the, what's the issues you guys have had with duplicates? Go ahead. Front end forms when people type their, they make mistakes, or mm -hmm. we get a lot of uh, when people are registering, we get organizational duplicates because one time they'll say, um, you know such and such in New York State, the next time they'll say in NYS. Um, you'll end up with, you know, you end up with uh, abbreviations and stuff and like the organization, you know, organization, same thing when they do their address differently. No matter how we set the dedupe rules, mm -hmm. you know, and we kind of lean toward let it happen as opposed to overwrite something that we don't want to overwrite. Mm -hmm. right. but so you're going with the new contact? Yeah, this is when people like, let's say they're registering for an event yeah. or something. Something front end flies. You know, yeah. Back end's pretty good at we're pretty good at fine. Right. Okay. Um, so as we go further down this list, so why do they happen? We've kind of touched on it in a couple of so there's a uh, some fun front end um, interaction with contacts. So we want we want contacts to donate online, we want them to register for events, we want all of that seamless integration there. Um, so this is one of the knock-on effects of that, right? So if you're allowing someone to go in and register for something, then you can't kind of stop them and say, are you sure you're not X? Because that's data protection. Um, you, can't, you can't say you're not allowed to change your surname because they may well have got married. There, there may well be changes there. Um, so you're kind of you're going to have to have, there's going to be some element of duplication in your database. So you kind of have to <coughs> accept that. Um, what are the other p possible avenues for duplicates coming into your database? Right, so imports, that's, a, that's one of the biggest that we come across, right? Um, why, do, why, do, why do imports create a lot of duplicates? In our case, it's because our members uh, proliferate email addresses. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> keep track. It's hard to keep track. But it's hard for them to keep track of which email address they use with. Right, yeah. yeah. And the converse of that, where one household is using especially seniors, where you have one household yeah, and that. they're both using the same one email address. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 expensive. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that comes, kind of leads on to how CIVI makes its decision, right? So CIVI's um, deduplication rules are, if I find zero or more than one contact, I'm going to create a new one. So if I don't find any, I'm creating a new contact. If I find more than one, with my matching criteria, I'm going to create one. What do you mean by fine? So depending on the deduplication rule that I've set, depending on the criteria, if it finds a match according to that criteria, a single contact, then it's an update. If, if I don't find a single match, if I find zero or more than one, I'm creating more. Th there's, there's, there's a hook that I'll talk about a bit further, further in. But the scoring is, is pretty much, um, you kind of rate the field, how much of the field you're going to do. I'll show you quickly that side of it. Um, the other thing that we've noticed is when people do imports is you get to pick the deduplication rule. And again, when a user does that, there's always the risk that they pick the wrong one, end up importing the entire file, realize they made the mistake, don't want to tell anyone because no one's going to really notice, um, <laughs> and then carry on and somebody else picks up the mess, right? <laughs> Yeah, because nobody, nobody's going to know, right? So how do you know that suddenly there are 5,000 more contacts in your database than there were a week ago? I mean, if you're talking small-scale databases, yeah, you'll notice pretty early. But if you're talking about 600,000, you're not going to notice an extra few thousand in your database. Well, the email address is accidentally imported into the street address field. <laughs> 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 So and then we find that out three months later. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've just skipped over the last question, how do you avoid, because actually it's, it's a very tough question, that one. Um, there are, uh, what generally happens is the more dedupes you end up with, the more complacent the users get, and you just kind of accept it. You don't, you don't really tackle the problem. Um, so the avoidance um, is, is kind of not making mistakes, being careful on imports, keeping a regular eye on your duplicate counts, things like that. Um, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. 
Um, so what does CBCRM provide? So there's some dedupe rules it pro provides on contact type. Um, it applies different rules based on the source of the data. So if somebody's doing something online, then it's uh, an unsupervised rule um, because obviously we can't show them that if they're a potential duplicate, we can't, can't respond to them, we can't give them any kind of prompts for that. So whatever they type in, we accept as, as gospel and, and carry out the action accordingly. Um, then there's the supervised rules, which are if your if you're staff users or the users of the CVCRM are in the admin interface and are creating contacts, they will see uh, a different set of deduplication rules. So they, for instance, might uh, you might do the first four characters of the first name, first four characters of the last name, plus some of the email address, and then you'll get prompted for potential duplicates. Um, and then there's a general rule for if I just want to see in my database what is the level of duplication if I was to apply different rules. So for instance, I might say, if I have a zip code, first line of address, and a surname, how many of these contacts have I got that, that were the same? Um, so I can use some general rules of my own. Um, so I'll just show you the last pre, we'll just have a quick look at CIVI. So this is the contacts, find and merge duplicate contacts. Um, I'll just make that a bit bigger. Uh, so find and merge the duplicate contacts. And then I just see the default rule. So this is bog standard CIVI. I've not done anything to this. Um, and the ones that we're looking at right now are the in individual ones. So the unsupervised rule is set to uh, email address. Right? Um, so if we just edit that rule. Uh, so if I make this unsupervised, what I've basically got is email address. And I will make the weight of that 10 and the matching criteria 10. Right. So what I'm saying here is I'm checking one field. I'm checking the entire length of that field. I'm giving it a weight of 10. And if my matching criteria meets 10, then I'm going to dedupe. I could take this a step further and say, well, let's put in, let's have the contacts last name. Let's give that 10. And then anybody want to take a guess as to what I've just set there? But what does this rule actually mean now? Any two match, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you don't, but you can weight it, so I could weight that as 15, and I could make that. I could do that as a 15 and make that 25. Now I've kind of changed the rule a bit. So now I'm saying one of these two must match. And then the gender could match, or they could both match. So you can get quite clever with the rules if you wanted to. Doesn't mean it's going to solve your problem. You're still going to still going to have duplicates, but you can you do have a fair amount of control of what you set those profiles to be. You, so, so for me, I would say straight away, well, that will pick up. That will not pick up siblings um, who will have the parents' email address, but they'll have the same last name. We're not trying to solve your problem here as well. <laughs> <laughs> we're we'll coming on to that in a minute. That is, yeah. Okay. Um, so if we look at the name and address one, uh, edit that rule, I can't do that, but it's telling me what the rule criteria are, first name, last name, middle name, suffix, street address, birthday. One thing on the address, I don't know if this has been solved recently, but it used to be that if you use street, street address, let's say, and put it down 10, and that contact had five street addresses and they were exactly the same, that would match it on... 10 times 5 and be 50. So you, it would actually... It hasn't been fixed. Hmm? It hasn't been, Has fixed. Not been fixed yet. That's a big issue. Same with email. If you're matching on email and yeah. you've given it a value of 10 and the contact has multiple that same email on, it'll actually add up 10, yeah. 20, 30 if they have three same emails oh, yeah. on the okay. record. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So what you have to do if you were trying to find records like that is keep email like a way of... Very you small. Should, you exactly. should devalue email. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. filter those out first before you try to do a general. Do well, no, but you can just make it real small, and then just put, like he was playing with that. It, that will work fine. Usually, we'll do ones, and then everything else will be tens. And then usually, you don't have ten of the same address or email. But yeah, that's big. Do addresses? Uh, that's a big issue. Match enough. Sorry. Do addresses match enough? I mean, like uh, I, I've found address data to be almost perfect. Yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on the quality of your data. So if you're, if you're the kind of organization that cleanses your addresses 
Um, in the UK, this happens a lot. We'll take the postcode and the first line and, and cleanse that address using a postal service. If you do that, then, then your address data is a lot better and you can probably use it. If you're not really doing that and you're just accepting you know, minimum of first line and the zip code, then yeah, you, you probably don't know, you, you know, you don't know what you're deduping against. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna move on. So um, to, to try one of these rules on my database to see what the level of duplication I've got, I can just use the rule. So I've got a, a really Mickey Mouse database here um, and I'll just do it on all contacts and I've got one matching contact, right? amazing how clean my database is. <laughs> um, so Sibby is just showing me contact one's name, contact two, the potential duplicate. I don't have a name for this contact, just an email address and the threshold. So how did it match it? What was the score? Right, so then I've got an option here. I can just merge that contact and say, actually, it's the same person. I'm pretty confident. Um, and now Sibby will just tell, show me what, what, I'm, what I'm about to merge and which way I'm about to do the merge. And I can flip that. This is all kind of standard stuff and, and works fine. Um, you know, I've got options about the email address. I can add a new one, I can overwrite it, or I can just leave it alone. If I wanted to bring all the data across, I just tick that and bring everything across. So that's kind of standard stuff. The other part I can do is mark that as not a duplicate. So if you're constantly coming up against duplicates that are false duplicates, not really the same person, it might be father and son, same address, same initials, same surname, keep coming up, you can just mark that as not a duplicate and then Civi will keep a, a track that those two contacts are not duplicates and shouldn't, shouldn't be thrown out in, in duplicate searches. Um, so in terms of managing duplicates, that's fine when I've just got the one contact. Let, what happens now if I add another contact with the same email address? So let's take that email address. And feel free to hazard a guess whilst I'm doing this. How many happen? I can do it with a duplicate, duplicate name. So let's, I mean, I'll do it with a totally different name. So let's do, so this is the uh, unsupervised rule throwing up here. Um, I'm just gonna ignore it because this is what users do. Uh, <laughs> 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 Uh, and save that. So now, now I've got um, two. I've got three contacts with the same email address. So who wants to tell me how many results I'm going to get back on my three, six? <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> uh, so let's just lose that. None. <laughs> So it's still one. still one. What happened there? Shouldn't be one. There is no point in the score. Should be more. <laughs> <laughs> should be more than one. Maybe I might have a different one. No, it should be more. What happened to that? Do you want to have a look? <laughs> no. Mm. I uh, just tried that. Uh. <coughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, three, right? I was expecting six as well, I must be honest. Um, so, it can quite quickly grow, right? So, I had one potential duplicate. Now I've got three potential duplicates just because I created one more contact with that same email address. So what Civi's doing is matching, it's matching all potential duplicates. So if I add another, I'm gonna end up with six right at that point. So it will, it will constantly rise. Um, so if this person signs up for another event, suddenly I'm gonna get them again. Because now for that email address, there is more than one contact. So if there was an online form using the default dedupe rules, it's gonna create another one. So um, that's just showing how quickly it can get out of control. I do have a batch merge here. Right? So this was quite a recent addition, 4.5 or 4.4, four, four, I think. 4.5, four, okay. So, which is fine if there's no clashes of data, right? So if there's a clash in address, if there's a clash in surname, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but to my understanding, if there's a clash, then it won't do the merge. You have to resolve that clash first. 
Um, so, which is fine if you've just got email addresses. So if someone accidentally imported a bunch of email addresses from a file, it's fine. You can kind of you can kind of deal with that issue. Um, or if people are signing up for newsletters, fine, you can deal with that. Um, but if it is data, it's real registrations and stuff, it's actually quite a difficult one to, to allow. Um, let's go back. So where it doesn't work. So one dedupe rule per contact type. So in an ideal world, we'd have lots of rules per contact type, right? So we'd say, this is rule one. If you find a duplicate, great. If you don't, drop to rule two, have, a l have another look. If you don't find it there, drop to rule three, have another look. So that, in an ideal world, that's what we have to do, have multiple rules that, that applied. Um, there's another issue where you've got profiles that don't have all the data that you want for your rules. Right? So you might not be capturing an email address on a, on a particular form um, because it's children registering for events. You don't want to capture email addresses. Uh, what does the do rule do in that situation? It, there's just not enough data for you to, to fire it properly. So this kind of issue, you can't really, it's very hard to get around it. You, you're kind of going to expect some dedupes there. Imports under the user control. So we talked about somebody mapping the wrong fields in altogether or picking the wrong dedupe rule uh, and you end up with lots of duplicates there. Entry of contacts, I've just shown you how, I can, how easily I can just ignore the duplicates. And it does happen. It's not a dig at users. It's just sort of, <laughs> if, if you see that constantly daily and you're entering 20 or 30 contacts a day, uh, you just become blind to those messages. You're just kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And you just carry on, right? Um, the merge screen shows a Cartesian product, yeah. So as you start adding more and more contacts, the list will start growing exponentially. Um, now, the, the last two are, we, we started noticing a, a leukemia lymphoma. So the performance of the merge screen on large data sets is, is not really, it, it doesn't really work. It's because every contact is compared to the entire database. Yeah, so if you've got 600,000 contacts, you 600,000 times checking the database, 600,000 records, it's a huge search. Um, and it, it doesn't really work. So we couldn't use it for the entire database there. We had to split it out and use small sections, um, which again is not really is not really doing a full dedupe. Um, uh, the final one is the duplicates very quickly spiral out of control. So as you end up with a situation where, I think someone said you've got a thousand duplicates in a six thousand potential. potential, right? So that's that's you know you're talking about what fifteen percent. It can very easily turn into twenty twenty five, and before you know it, it's way out of control. And the more you publish online, the more it gets, it gets worse. Um, and I kind of find, um, in my experience, this is a kind of task that is always on people's to-do list. I am going to get around to doing it. Um, I'm going to like allocate a couple of hours tomorrow or next week. Um, you know when it's like you never actually do get around to doing it. And then, <coughs> yeah, you're right. Suddenly it becomes such a major problem that it's almost um, overwhelming to, to, to even sort of scratch the, the tip of the iceberg. So it's best just to crush it under the carpet. And pretend <laughs> it's not As implementers, again, as implementers will know, we, we don't really, you know, up until now, I've never, never really dealt with duplicates as an issue. I've always treated it as though you just need to use your database and sort it out and stay on top of your duplicates. It's not really my problem as an implementer to worry about your duplicates. But actually, it kind of is because it creates a bad impression for the users because they feel like, where did all these contacts come from? Sometimes they're genuine. Sometimes they're from data, extra, data import migrations from spreadsheets. So it's not really our problem. But if users are unhappy and it creates a negative impression on the CVCRM community, then obviously it's a problem. Um, the, other, uh, the other point is that if, if Chris was to mail out his 10,000 contacts and actually he's mailing the same person 30 times, it creates a negative impression of Civi because the users just know they sent that out of Civi mail and surely Civi mail is intelligent enough to work out this person's a duplicate, so why is it sending it? So you, get, you end up with a negative effect all the way through, not just the recipient, but all the way through the organization. Um, we, we couldn't get the merge page to run at all. It kept, I think you left it running for a day once. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it just wasn't, it just, it doesn't even respond. So we, we were in a situation where we couldn't, not only could we, could we not 
we had the problem, but we couldn't really solve it either. There was no way to kind of say, right, okay, how do we deal with this? Um, the rules not being flexible enough, so that's my cascading. So if the rules could cascade, you could be a lot more clever about how you dealt with duplicates and, and how you process them. So if you could cascade a rule right down to be quite tight, then you could end up with a thousand duplicates you could deal with if the merge result screen worked. But again, that's the other problem. Um, and the merging relies on no data clashes. So in the last case, that it just wasn't going to work because all of their data that's coming in generally has address information or payment information or something against it, um, which, uh, which would clash with the existing contacts. So a batch merging of 100,000 contacts, you could never run it. You just couldn't trust the, couldn't trust the result. So there's been a few times where we've done postal mailing and posted the same person. <laughs> Which is, you know, expensive. it's expensive, and, and as a as a charity, you look pretty <laughs> bad when you do that, you know, because you kind of someone's donated to you, and what you're doing them is sending them six postal letters, yeah. showing how well you've spent their money, <laughs> you know, um, doesn't look good. So um, our solution, uh, not to all the problems, but to the problem of how do we get to a point where we can at least deal with the duplicate issue at LLR, i.e. Uh, from a database of 600,000, how many duplicates did you, do we know the number? So maybe, maybe sort of 45, 15,000. Right. I think it's a bit higher than that. But yeah, well, let's just go with the word. We'll go with 50,000. So we think there are about 50,000 duplicates and how do we how do we resolve that? That's a, that's a big number. So what we did was um, we introduced a, a couple of hooks, right? So a hook to be able to um, add your own dedupe rule. Okay, so the way that dedupe works is that because you're building the rule via a profile, it has to check every single contact against every other sing contact in the database and then establish the rule and then work out if that contact matches the threshold or not before it decides to throw them away. So it's a, that's a heavy, heavy process to do that. Um, it would be a lot quicker and this is what we ended up doing. If you actually could give it the query you wanted to run. So you could say, this is what I want you to do. Here's the query. Match on the email address and match on the first name and last name. And then give me your result. So don't get every contact and then check them against every other contact. That's, that's not the way to do it. Um, so here we have this hook. Um, and what we're doing is we're adding a custom first name, last name, email address. Um, uh, rule and here's the query for the rule so we build those two in and we can add as many as these as we want so we could have 10 or 20 different rules that you could use um, and they all they all can be however complex the query you want um, then in the uh, in the dedupe rules you actually pick that so you pick the the custom rule that you want and that's it you just pick that one so it's the same as picking another field but I'm picking the custom rule and I, can, I could mix and match. So I could have two or three rules that I use in one, uh, in one dedupe rule. Yeah? But in LLR's case, we build the query to exactly the, the level we want. We pick that one. We give it the threshold of 10 in the entire, uh, entire weight of 10. Uh, and what that means is that query, um, instead, of ta instead of running for a day and not re responding, <coughs> takes five minutes yeah, and gives you back a response straight away. Um, so that's where we're able to say, okay, we think there are 45, 50,000 duplicates that we need to work through. Um, so the second thing is, well, what happens next? So you get a nice screen of 50,000 records. What do you do with that? Right? You can't really. So the default result screen on Civi is, um, let's go back. It doesn't really tell me much. So I can see I've got two contacts, okay, but how can I make that decision to hit that merge button? There's not enough on that screen for me to actually do that. So the second uh, set of tweaks is to start looking at this, the screen that actually lists the duplicates, to say actually it's not enough to just show the names. You need to see, you need to see the information that you were deduping on. So you need to see the email addresses, you need to see the street, you need to see the postal codes, um, and you need to see the, the threshold that, that the dedu worked that out on. Uh, and then you've got enough there to then press that button or not. Yeah, so you can make the decision, you say, okay, I'm gonna do that one. So that kind of deals with um, 
deals with some of the issues. What if there's more data you want to look at? So again, what we added was the ability to hover over the contact record and actually see all of the information as you would do on any kind of search results. So again, then that gives me a bit more and I've got more information at hand. So I, what it means is as a user, I can start working with this one screen and if I was to spend a few hours on it, I could actually start working through some merges rather than have to keep going merge, checking the data. No, that's not a duplicate. Come back to the screen. It's not a duplicate. Do it again. Um, what you also notice is we added um, the checkbox there so that I could pick a few of these contacts and merge them. So I might pick five or six and say, oh, these are all definite duplicates, merge them, and then the screen refreshes with the rest. <coughs> um, so again, as we, so as we were going through iterations with Chris and, and the team, there were more and more tweaks coming out. So we, we were getting to a number, we got to 50,000, and it was we can't work with the screen, so we adjusted the screen. Then it was like, well, it'd be a lot better if we could find all the contacts with the same name and deal with them. So we added a, a filter to the contacts results screen. So you can say, okay, give me everybody with that email address, for instance, and then it's going to show you only those contacts with that email address who are in your duplicates list. So again, you're kind of filtering down and you're, you're getting to a point where, where you, could, you could have five or ten users working on duplicates dealing with 20 or 30 at a time, and you're actually starting to, starting to get on top of it. Um, the user's being able to specify the duplicate pair, we've talked about that. So the big one um, is the, the changes to the batch merges, right? So at the moment, when you hit the batch merge, there's no, there's no kind of progress bar. It just goes away and does it, and you kind of just sit there and go, is it doing something, isn't it doing something? Maybe I should hit refresh, maybe I should hit back, maybe I should do something. So again, when you're kind of merging a thousand records, you don't, you, you don't really want that. So we added a progress bar to kind of give you a, this is what's happening, this is where you're at. So at least the user's not kind of falling asleep and, and had enough. Uh, the other thing we did was any conflicts during the merge will show up. Um, so um, if I merged a hundred records and five or six didn't because of a conflict, then I'll see, uh, I'll see what the conflict was. So standard CV uh, doesn't really have this conflict uh, thing at the moment, but we added some rules. I don't know if you want to talk about those rules in terms of contact A, when contact A should be merged to contact B. Just as a couple of examples. Um, are these the sort of custom rules? Like yeah. Um, so like Drupal ID and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we came up with sort of um, a hierarchy um, of rules which um, Vader then built into Civi um, to, uh, to make sort of record A get merged into record B. Um, so part of that was, for example, um, if um, one record's got a Drupal account and the other one hasn't, automatically flip that so that the Drupal account record will be um, saved and the other one will be terminated for want of a better word um, then sort of there was another line that um, if, if that wasn't included then um, we take the oldest record and we merge the newest one into the oldest record regardless of the contribution number etc um, and I am scratching my head trying to think of some of the other rules that we did I think it was the do not mail ones and so if somebody's got a do, ma do not mail flag against them then you you don't you keep that you preserve the do not mail and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so actually, yeah, so if there's privacy settings on um, one of the record but not on both, um, you take, you, we leave the one that's got the privacy setting on it and merge the one that has it into it. Yeah. Um, things like that. Right, so we added, basically we added a bunch of custom rules about under what conditions should you do the merge and, and how should you pull that data across. Because look, they're not simple rules. They're, everybody's got different ways and different interpretations. So the things like the Drupal account is quite an important one um, because they, uh, at Leukemia Lymphoma, they have a, a lot of interaction with events where people log in and set up their fundraising pages and do things. If you merged it the other way and lost the Drupal account link, that would be quite major, right? So that fundraising page is suddenly gone. I can't log in anymore. I can't do anything. And likewise, so if, if both records have a Drupal account, then um, Civi is to leave those. Yeah. yeah. And then, so skip that line and move on to the, to the next one. Right. So these are kind of things to be aware of. So the reason I'm 
flagging them now is because you probably, if you're doing duplicate merges at the moment, you, you've got logins as well. It's just another element to take into account. It won't show up in the merging stuff that, that you, there is a duplicate, uh, Drupal account or a WordPress account for this person. And you might accidentally lose accounts by merging the wrong, wrong way around. Okay, so we, we, we have those kind of things put in. So we've got some extra rules and some conditions so that we're not having to manually go through each merge, even if it's got a simple kind of uh, extra piece of information against it or a d different address line. It's the older ones that are, that are lost and merged into the newer ones. Um, so the, the seventh kind of thing we did was to allow aggressive merges. So merging is one of those thankless tasks that you can kind of try and try and try and you, know, you might spend three months on it and reduce the amount of duplicates by 20%. Uh, and then you kind of think, I've got to take a bit more drastic action here. So what we allowed was an aggressive merge where it will take conflicts um, and still force the merge so if two of them did have a, a Drupal account, it would just take the newer one and lose the old one. Um, and sometimes that's necessary, right? So if, you, if you're just not getting through the problem, you can't manually make a decision because there's no differentiator. How do I know which one's the right one? I don't really know, but I have to deal with the problem. So I'll, I'll force a merge. Um, so there's, there's some of the things we did. All the code is on GitHub. Um, we've got links for it there. Um, this is on our... On our um, a blog post on our website. So uh, the link for that is at the end of this presentation. So feel free to have a look. What our next phases are to is to, we've got one or two more tweaks to make to this, to this I think. Um, yeah, so it's primarily around this, um, the forced merge function. Um, so that is sort of, um, after, <coughs> after you've done like the, the first lot of uh, batch merging, um, the, the super user, because it is a super user function, will then get taken through to this sort of, um, this force merge screen. And we're gonna customize this a bit more to show, um, to actually highlight where, where the conflict is, is occurring. Um, so for example, if it's um, to do with mailing blocks um, or a Drupal account, that, that sort of thing. So, um, and then what we're going to do is be able, the user's going to be able to multiple select, so select all or select you know, maybe 10 or 20, and then uh, force merge them, and then go back here, um, grab another sort of 10, 20, 30, and, and do the same thing again. Um, yeah, so that, that's sort of what, what we're working on. Yeah, so that's the final part of this. And then once that's done, um, we, we should be pretty much done with it. But the code's there anyway, so if you do have large data sets, I mean, my experience is sort of when you're getting 100,000 plus, that's when the, the issues start to creep in and you can't really, it's not an easy thing to deal with. So this might be useful for, for, for kind of larger data sets. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.